Hey guys, enter the stars. And part of the goal of this channel is to find the absolute truth, no matter what the cost. And so we're going to consider some things today. We're not saying that this is absolute truth. We're simply drawing connections so that we can decide what is in fact the truth. What you're looking at is a water droplet flattened on a flat firmament, a fixed surface. And as you can tell, the feeling inside of you is that this resonates on some carnal level of truth. Now, do not be afraid. I understand the possible deception of a flat earth but we have to at least consider these things because one thing is truth and that is is that we know something we've seen the illuminati cards reveal certain things that have come to pass now certain words and terms come to mind when considering a flat earth such as through the looking glass going over the edge and the glass ceiling this is a panoramic view because I asked myself what happens at the equator if the stars are going in one direction in the northern hemisphere and the stars are going the opposite direction in the southern hemisphere I asked myself, why is the moon upside down in the southern hemisphere? And then I thought about the term, the looking glass. And I realized that when you look through a glass, everything appears upside down. And I began to ask myself why the Illuminati shows us mirrors of everything opposites to keep us confused and I thought about why and how Satan tries to be like the most high when I was considering these things so I decided to go into stellarium and take a look at the South Pole and I thought about the water droplet and I thought about a sun that would circle the water droplet and that Antarctica, if it was on the edge of this, would be furthest away from the sun, but that it would see the sun for 24 hours around the sun and that the summer in Antarctica would be still pretty cold because Antarctica would be at the bottom edge of this. And if people in Antarctica were looking up at the sky below the southern hemisphere, which would fall somewhere in here, that they might see things backwards looking through a looking glass and that the moon would appear upside down as it does here based on their vantage point of where they were on this bubble. You see, You'll never arrive at truth by accepting what other people tell you. You only arrive at it by questioning everything you are ever told. And again, I'm not saying that this is for sure what is going on, but I'm just considering all things. So I thought to myself, if the sun is rotating above this bubble and we are on the surface of this bubble, why isn't Arctica going to be burning up and it is because the Sun never goes to the center of this bubble it perfectly could rotate around in this direction so in the summer months of Arctica you'll see the Sun never set but it will never get too hot but still warmer than Antarctica 
which would be around the bottom of this bubble because Antarctica still is further away from the Sun. So just like the UN model, the Sun goes in tracks. During the summer it's down here near Antarctica on this track. And then we get our winter here because the Sun is a little bit further away than it is in Antarctica on its ring. And the time zones occur around the edge as the Sun moves away and around this bubble. And so if you take this UN map and flip it on its side and raise the middle surface and turn it in to this bubble, you can see the tracks of the sun as I've described them to you. You can see how the sun never goes quite close to the Arctic giving them 24-hour daylight in their summer. While the winter, the Arctic, Antarctic, never sees the sun in their winter, and how everything is a mirror in its opposites, you could see how this could explain everything that the round earthers use to debunk the flat earthers. It can all be explained. The question is, is it the truth? That is the question. Now, summer in Antarctica falls in January and February. So I decided to go into Stellarium and look to see if in fact the sky does what it says or what we're proposing that it could possibly do. Now, the caveat here is I will not put up with negative comments because we're looking into this because we are simply looking into it when the attacks come you will get blocked because we are simply asking questions if you want to have a debate we can do that but calling telling people they are on drugs or a troll will not be accepted now let's look at Antarctica and look at the horizon and find out what we're dealing with here. And so here we are. We find ourselves in January 2015 in Antarctica. And we are going to track the sun through the sky as it moves. And as we track the sun through the sky in Antarctica, we can see that it dips and dives, reaching its lowest point on the horizon in the south and reaching its highest point on the horizon in the north. And then we could see that from this perspective, if in fact the Earth existed on a bubble, that the sun would do exactly what we're showing you. And everything I just said is in exact reverse. Just like the moon phases go backwards in the southern hemisphere versus the northern hemisphere. Looking at these two lunar calendars we are also seeing the upside down version of the sun from the southern hemisphere. And we are seeing a reversal of what should be. It will appear closer to the horizon when it is in the south versus the north. The exact opposite as everything else is opposite in the sky. Now I want you to imagine yourself on the bubble at the edge of the ring in, Act in, a, in Antarctica. And no matter where you stand in Antarctica, if you're looking south, the sun will be closest to you because it will be closest to the edge of the ring. But when you look north, that sun will appear higher in the sky as it rotates away from the edge of the ring. And this is exactly what we see as the sun dips 
and dives and then rises again in the north but dips toward the horizon in the south. Anyway, you guys, this is some stuff to contemplate. Again, we're just putting this out there to get us to think because we take nothing that we are given as truth until we check it for ourselves. So then when we consider the CERN globe of science and innovation, we see how the truth could be hiding in plain sight. That the earth could possibly be shaped like this. And that when the sun goes around the corner of this droplet, that that is how the time zones change. And how it is light on one side of the earth and dark on the other. So it also explain how the widest track being the one closest to this outer edge provides the 24 hour daylight in January and February for Antarctica. But then how when the sun is on its middle track near Arctica that it is invisible to south to the southern hemisphere in Antarctica we could start to see how the truth could have been hiding in plain sight all along. We can see how ships could dip below a horizon, yet still appear to be standing straight up as they dip below here. Now there are many research stations in Antarctica. As you can see in these maps, but one in particular caught my attention and it is called Casey Station. So I did a little research on why this is called Casey Station and it's named after a man named Casey and it was first occupied in 1988. This is the man Richard Casey, Baron Casey. And this man was born on the Julian equivalent date of 9-11, as you can see demonstrated here. With the Gregorian date entered as September 11th, and that translating to August 29th, the date was born. And we know that the Gregorian calendar was instituted with 88 days left until the end of the year on October 4th, 1582, and that is when the 10 days of the calendar were changed with 88 days left until the end of the year. So you see, there are some strange things going on with Antarctica. And so these are things to consider. Take care and be safe, you guys.